Today isn't a dress rehearsal. It's your life. How often do we say to ourselves, when such and such happens, things will be different? When our kids are grown, when we get a promotion, when we change jobs, when we retire, when some magic time in the future comes, we'll start living our real life. For now, we'll just go through this dress rehearsal until the real show starts. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is your life. You don't get a warm-up session before the big game. You don't get a trial run. This is it. Make a list of the things you will do today. Are you slugging through them? Or are you performing them like this is the real show? The things on the list make up your life. You won't always be excited about doing them. And some of them will be things you do simply because you have to. But they are worth doing with proper attention and care. Pay attention to the things in your life you approach with dread and contempt. Having contempt for your daily tasks is no different than feeling contempt for your own life. As these things are your life. There isn't going to be a magical time when all of your daily tasks fall to the wayside and you finally arrive at Narnia. There will be plenty of new tasks to replace the ones you loathe right now because that's what life is. Perform today like it matters because it does. Each task you encounter, ask yourself if this is a means to an end or the end itself. When we approach each day as a means to an end, we make progress towards what it is we really want to achieve with our lives. Today is the real show. The curtain's up and the spotlights are on. How will you perform? Those looking for all the tools are the ones avoiding the work. We are living in the age of self-help. Anyone not working on improving their life should take a close look at their complacency. Why don't you want to be a better person? Asking this question is powerful because there really are only two answers. One, you don't want to do the work. Or two, you're already perfect the way you are. So which is it? Do you think you're already flawless? Or are you avoiding the work? My guess is you don't think you're perfect. Most of the time, we don't work on improving ourselves because deep inside we feel unworthy. If we finally start believing in ourselves, we realize there is so much to change, we don't know where to start. We're overwhelmed by all the work and we freeze. We've all been there. We have a million things to do on our list. We look at it, experience a rush of anxiety, and then pick up our phones and start scrolling Instagram instead. It's because when we have 50 things to fix, it's difficult to know where to start. This is where the tool master comes into play. The self-help junkies. These people have read all the books, gone to all the rah-rah conferences, and joined all the private Facebook groups. They listen to podcasts from sunup to sundown, buy journals and fancy stickers and pens, in case they ever actually sit down to do the work to write in them. Tool masters aren't limited to the self-help world either. They're gathering tools in every corner of life. In my days of gym ownership, I had plenty of tool masters cross my threshold. These guys were always the most enthusiastic clients during that initial consult. They had finally come to a place where they were sick of being out of shape. Their first workout, they showed up with all the fancy gear. The tall socks, the shin guards to protect their shins when they first start Olympic lifting, a weight belt, you know, because you're going to be lifting heavy on your first day. Those who were ultra prepared even had athletic tape for the blisters they were going to get from doing all those pull-ups. A gym bag full of equipment on day one meant one thing. They would be nowhere to be found two weeks from now. The lady tool masters in the gym usually showed up in the newest Lululemon print, matching hair tie and all. They looked fantastic. The five days they actually came to the gym before canceling their membership via email. There's always a tool master on the construction site too. He's easy to spot. 
You find him walking around, grabbing tools for all the senior guys on the site who are actually working. He's so helpful. Always willing to grab a hammer, switch out that screwdriver, and chase down the 2 by 4 you need. But before long, you find him sitting, swigging his Rockstar energy drink, and staring at his phone. After all, gathering those tools for everyone else who is working takes it out of you. I grew up on a construction site. That's why I know this firsthand. I recently caught myself being a tool master. I'm in the thick of publishing my first book and found myself frozen when it was time to write the introduction. Staring at a blank page, I turned to the internet to look at all the glorious writers ahead of me in their careers. I searched how to write an introduction as if I don't already know how to write one. I thumbed through books in my library to compare how crappy mine would be in comparison to theirs. I caught myself after wasting a few hours, thankfully, sat myself down and started typing. An hour later, with Les Miserables, do you hear the people sing, blasting from my office, I wrote something beyond which I thought I was capable. Tools are necessary, but they don't replace the actual work. You can read all the books, but you have to put into action what you learn. You can meet and greet with all the famous gurus, but the selfies aren't going to change your life. That part is up to you. Keep learning. Keep seeking inspiration from people who are living what they teach. But don't let it replace the work. You are worthy. <laughs>